Hello there, boys and girls. This is Mr. Mark with our next installment of Physics Lessons. In this video, we're discussing the difference between velocity and speed. Now, these are two similar quantities, but they're fundamentally different, and we need to understand those fundamental differences. Now, in order to understand the difference between speed and velocity, you need to understand the difference between displacement and distance. Displacement is a word we've already used. Displacement simply represents a change in position. We give that the symbol delta x. It's the distance from your final position to your initial or starting position, and it includes a direction. Left, down, left, right, positive, negative, whatever. So, for example, suppose we had a simple number line, something like this, and we have an object that moves along the number line. So let's suppose that it starts at 1 meter and then moves to 4 meter. So our initial position is 1 meter, and our final position is 4 meters. The displacement is simply the difference between 4 meters and 1 meter, which is 3 meters. Now note that the path doesn't matter. Oh, we need to include a direction there, so we say 3 meters to the right. But the path that the object actually take is, takes is irrelevant. If we want to know the displacement of an object, all we need to know is where it started and where it ended, not what its actual path was. So that's the definition of displacement. Now the term distance, on the other hand, is the length of the path that's actually followed by the object as it moves. It does not include a direction, so a distance is always going to be positive. The symbol that we're going to use for distance is a D, and there's going to be other symbols that you might use later on, but we're going to keep it simple for right now. We'll use a D for distance, and we would measure it in meters just like any other length. So if we took the same object, moving from 1 meter to 4 meter, the distance that it actually travels would be the sum of the lengths of its paths. So moving from 1 meter to 7 meters, the object has to travel 6 meters, and then going from 7 meters to 4 meters, the object has to travel 3 meters. So add those together, and that tells you the distance that the object actually traveled. So which of these is more meaningful depends on the situation. If this is you walking for exercise, then distance might be a more meaningful measurement. If you're talking about locating somebody who's lost in the woods, displacement would probably be a more meaningful measurement. So which one's more meaningful depends on the context. So let's redefine the term velocity. We're going to call this the average velocity. Average velocity is displacement over time. Average speed is distance over time. So they're very similar definitions, but fundamentally they're different. Velocity is dependent on displacement. Speed is dependent on distance. And so our equation for velocity was delta x over delta t. Our equation for speed is d over delta t. So both are measured in meters per second, and both are useful in different situations. If you're talking about a car going around a racetrack, speed is probably more meaningful. If you're talking about navigating a boat across the lake, then velocity is probably more meaningful. So let's look at a simple example. So same kind of number line setup. And suppose we have an object that starts at 4 meters at 0 seconds. And then it moves along this path, and two seconds later, it's at negative 2 meters. So the velocity would be the displacement over the time. And so I would subtract negative 2 meters minus negative 4 meters, which is negative 6 meters. And that change in time is 2 seconds. So I'd put it over 2 seconds to get a velocity of negative 3 meters per second. To be absolutely correct, we should probably indicate that it's 3 meters per second to the left. Be very clear about what the direction is. The speed, on the other hand, is distance over time. And so in the 2 seconds, the object goes 4 meters to the right, 
and then four meters to the left, and then six more meters to the left, or you can think about it as 10 meters to the left. And so the total distance that it moves would be 16 meters. And so 16 meters in two seconds is eight meters per second. Notice that that doesn't tell us anything about the direction. It just tells us the distance it traveled over two seconds. So velocities include direction, speeds do not. So we kind of take that same example here. So same example. Now suppose that we had a little bit more information. Suppose that we were able to figure out where the object was at one second, and we could use a smaller delta t. If we did that in the first zero to one seconds, we would get a velocity of four meters per second, just for that particular part of the motion. We would get a speed, which is four meters over one second, that is also four meters per second. If we did the interval from one to two seconds, that's where the object goes from eight meters to negative two meters, our velocity would look like negative 10 meters per second. The distance that it travels is 10 meters, and so the speed would be 10 meters per second. And so the idea here is that if we have an interval, or we make delta t small enough that the object doesn't change directions, then the speed and the velocity have the same size. The speed still doesn't tell us anything about the direction, but they end up having the same size, same number. A big fancy science word that we're going to use for size this year is magnitude. And so that's a word that we need to get familiar with. Magnitude means the size of something. And so by making our interval smaller, we can get a more accurate idea of what the motion actually looks like. And so the big idea here is that as we make that time interval smaller, then the average velocity gets closer to the average, or excuse me, the instantaneous velocity. The instantaneous velocity would represent the velocity at that particular point. We can find that by finding the slope of the position versus time graph at that particular instant. So the big idea is that by choosing delta t to be as small as possible, we get a more precise picture of what the motion actually looks like. More descriptive, it's more meaningful. Now this is going to become uh, much more important when we get to accelerated motion. So if something is speeding up or slowing down, then the um, instantaneous velocity will be the thing that is changing. So this idea is going to build up to bigger ideas further down the road. So let's take a simple example. Let's suppose we have a graph of position versus time that looks like this. And we want to know what is the velocity at 8 seconds. Now when we say velocity, we mean the instantaneous velocity, not the average velocity. And so if we find the slope, of that line. Note that we can use any two points that are part of that line. Don't have to use a point at 8 seconds necessarily. Um, and then find the slope. The instantaneous velocity at 8 seconds would be 0.5 meters per second. The next question we might want to know is what is the velocity at 13 seconds? So basically in the second part where the line is sloping downward. So we do the same thing just choose two different points and so we would get a velocity or a slope of negative two meters per second and so the instantaneous velocity at eight seconds is different than the instantaneous velocity at 13 seconds at eight seconds it's moving forwards at 13 seconds it's moving backwards now if we wanted to know what the average velocity was like all we cared about was the first and last point then we would do the displacement over the time. And so using the first and last point, 
we would get something like 0.14 meters per second. All three of those numbers are meaningful. It just depends on the context of what you want to know as to which one's going to be most meaningful to you. Now, the definition of instantaneous speed, very similar, is simply the magnitude or the size of the instantaneous velocity. So here's where they start to look a little bit more similar. If we took our same graph from before, and I'm going to put those velocities we found a second ago on there, the speed at each of those points will be the same as the velocity, just without the sign. Speed never has a negative sign because it does not include a direction. And so the speed would simply be the magnitude or size of the velocity. Now if we wanted to know what was the average speed, well then that would be different. Then we do our distance over time. So it moves forward 6 meters, backwards 4 meters over the time interval. And so the average speed in this case would be 0.71 meters per second. So for instance, if this is a race you're running, and you want to collect data to indicate how quickly you're finishing the race, the average speed may be more meaningful to you than any of the other numbers. Again, it just depends on the context as to which one is more important. So note that even though the um, instantaneous values had the same size, the average value of speed versus average velocity is still different. Okay, so real quick review. Please don't write this down because you've already written it all down. But the average velocity is defined as displacement over time. Average speed is defined as distance over time. Instantaneous velocity would be the slope at a, of a position time graph in any particular instant, which would be the same as displacement over time, but make the time really small. And instantaneous speed is just the magnitude of that value. So again, um, remember that if we just say velocity or speed, we're referring to the instantaneous quantity. So let's see if you can do one of these on your own. Here's a position versus time graph. And what I want you to do is press the pause button and see if you can find the average speed and average velocity um, and then the instantaneous speed and velocity for each interval. So push solve, see if you can work that out, piece of paper, scratch paper, your notes, a whiteboard, whatever, and then press play again and check your solutions against mine. Okay, so for the first interval, I get the slope of that line to be 5, and so your velocity is 5 meters per second, your speed is 5 meters per second. For the second interval, I got that slope to be negative 1, so your velocity is negative 1 meters per second, your speed is 1 meter per second, remember speed's always positive. And then the average for the entire graph, I got the velocity to be 7 fifths meters per second, or 1.4 meters per second. And then the speed, distance is 10 meters and 3 meters, so 13 meters over 5 seconds will give you something like 2.6 meters per second. So if you're able to get all, what, six of those values, then you should feel pretty good. Um, of course, we'll do more work in class. So if you didn't get all six of those right away, don't feel bad. Um, we'll do some more practice, but it's important that we understand these basic definitions before we move on to motion where we're speeding up and slowing down. I think that's enough physics for today, so we'll call that the end. If you have any questions, as always, please be sure to bring them up during class. Bye-bye now.